up a rule that if you pass him, one of the guys, make sure he sees you. So we always know there's somebody behind me or in front where you're at, you know, the three of us. And uh, so anyway, I ended up, I was behind there, and I knew it. I knew the other two were ahead of me. And oh, uh, let's see, how was it? Clark Allen, he was, he was the next to me. And then the Pinky Ledwich was first. And what happened? Oh, Pinky, oh, he went across this log. And then there was a nice pool, and he just sat down, and he was catching trout right there. And here come old Clark Allen. He went across that log, and here come the yellow jackets out of it. And old Pinky was sitting there, he sat by the pool, you know, fishing. And here come old Clark Allen, running as fast as he could run, and he was throwing everything. The last thing he threw was his watch and everything. <laughs> Dove in that pool. And there was snow on the ground. He said, hey, he's lost his mind. <laughs> Gone crazy. Boy, he come up. Those goddamn yellow jackets like killed him. Oh, they stung the shit out of him. And we're still several miles from Fairview. So we just had to quit right then and get him out of there. Boy, he was in bad shape. <laughs> but he said, Boy, I thought old Clark had lost his mind. <laughs> Diving in that ice cold water. <laughs> but he said, When he came up, he was just goddamn yellow jackets all around him. And he said, Jesus Christ, he was in a hell of a mess. And I came along the last. I walked across the same log. Not a thing. They all came out after Clark. <laughs> they all went after him. <laughs> Cut wood. And I seen some dead wood, but I had to come down off the, I had my chainsaw, and I had to come down a kind of a steep bank about six feet, and I was cutting that up and throwing it up to the road, you know, and this sort of thing. So I got done. So I had my chainsaw, and I just kind of, you know how you scramble up a steep hill? Scramble up the goddamn hill. And the goddamn yellow jackets came after me, but only one stung me. And I turned around, boy, I piled into that car, and <laughs> I just kicked over a nest. Yeah. You know, they nest on the ground. Right. And boy, lucky, he didn't get me. Just that one got me. But you know, up there at Fairview, we used to deer hunt up there. And it, it got so bad, the yellow jackets. What we did there is we set a, some, something out for them, and they'd get it. It would watch where he goes. He'd take off that way. So somebody would go out there and, and watch. And pretty soon would, another one would go that way and he'd see where he goes. And pretty, pretty soon they'd find, would find the nest. They'd have a hole in the goddamn ground. Then we'd go get some gasoline and pour in and throw a match on. <laughs> that was the end of that crew. <laughs> the yellow jacket is better. I just put a little bit on the bait and god damn. Uh, yeah. I learned when I was working the geysers and they had a ton of those meat bees up there. Yeah. Those guys that were local up there, we'd have, it was so bad, like on the grill of your truck where you yeah. you, you hit moths and bugs and stuff. You know, you, you'd look in front of your truck and there'd be meat bees all over there trying to get that stuff off. But come lunchtime, I mean, you go to eat your sandwich stuff, you, usually everybody get in their truck. Yeah. Because they would just, here they come, boy, as soon yeah. as you had anything that was meat. And then what those guys said to do, the locals there, you have a plate or something you got going. They said, just put a little side, let them, don't swat them, just let them have a little bit. And, yeah. And just, and because they'd sit out there and I'd go, yeah, I'm getting in. Well, but I remember back in Utah. Yeah. That it got so bad, Jeff, that we uh, had my motor home there mm -hmm. and you couldn't get out the door. Mm -hmm. I mean, they were all over you. And so we got two traps. I put one on one side of the bumper, one on the other. That way we could get in and out. <laughs> and boy, it just filled with those yellow jackets. Just yeah. But you remember, Mike, about the beer? Because mm -hmm. the gal told us when we bought it, beer is the best thing to mm -hmm. put in. But we found out, and I don't remember which, one of the beers didn't work. Yeah. Do you remember which one? Yeah, it was Coors because it Coors. tastes like I've... mule mule piss. Yeah. <laughs> that's what I told the Judy. I I think it was Coors, but I'm not sure. Yeah, I wouldn't drink it either, Grandpa. Huh? I wouldn't drink it either. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I did to Steve one time water skiing. He was talking, we always had about Coors or Budweiser. Yeah. And he was skiing, and he had his beer in the boat. It was about empty, so I, I reached down there, and I filled it back up with lake water and set it there about half full of lake water. And, I, and as Steve was done 
And then he was drinking that beer, and then we got going. I said, you know, that Coors just tastes like lake water. Oh, it's better than Budweiser. And, it, you know, it took him a while. We finally told him, yeah, we, you're drinking lake water. Right? Five years out there. Boy, there was some, a lot of funny stories yeah. out there, but a lot of heartache, too, yeah. I'll tell you. A lot of times I had to work at work. We, we worked two-man car. That's all there was. So if your partner wanted off on a Saturday night, you worked it alone out there on Cottonwood Road on a Saturday night. It made that made a diplomat out of you. Boy, <laughs> you get along with those people. But you know, a lot of them were good people. Yeah. But we had one rule. We worked out there. So if we tell you that you've had enough to drink, go home. Don't or we don't want to see you in another bar tonight. If we see you, we're gonna book you. And we would. And we word got around it. Yes, sir. You ain't gonna see me. <laughs> Go home. But we got along with them pretty good. But. Remember the one about the gal in the bathroom? <laughs> that, yeah. That's a funny story. <laughs> I haven't heard funny. that one. Well, <clears throat> we work it, and of course, the goddamn the, the, the old blacks they love that dice game, you know. We're going along and there's one goddamn bar right in front of them, right out in front. They were they had a thing out there, boy. They were shooting crap. We pulled up and goddamn, they grabbed their money and they ran in 14 different directions. Me and my partner jumped out. We ran around behind the bar and they were all gone. You know, and I was looking at the restroom there. The man's had opened it up, nobody there. Women's opened it up, and the woman sitting on the pot. She said, I shut the door. I was still looking for something. She comes out and says, Officer, I'm sorry, I didn't know I used the wrong one. <laughs> <laughs> I said, That's okay. <laughs> Let you slide this time. <laughs> uh, just wondering, you'd enjoy this. Then this oh, one yeah. kid, and he was a nut. He had to be. We got a call on him. This woman called. And this kid's in, jail, in bed with her. Yeah. He called in bed. She said, I told him, get out of my bed. Get out of here. And he wouldn't do it. And she called the office room. Got there with, well, it was a camp on escaping. He was a little mentally deficient. <laughs> he was just, he wasn't doing anything. Been a Jordan, Democrat, he just wanted huh? to stay there in bed with her. You know? <laughs> okay, the, the people up there would tell the, the kids at, in Camp Owens that, hey, be careful, those deputies will shoot you. They have orders to shoot to kill, this sort of thing. And we did, you know. But so, anyway, this one time, this kid hollered at him, he stopped, he took off running. <laughs> Deadness went up and got him. He said, man, you just barely missed me. I felt, I heard that bullet go by me. I said, well, God damn, I had it right on you. I thought I'd kill you. <laughs> so I go, <laughs> uh, You had a trailer blow up in your face? Yeah, the principal of the Johnsondale High School got a hold of me one day and he, he said um, he was a friend of the guy, and his wife had called him. He's the principal, and he said, "My husband is is going up there, and uh, he's going to commit suicide. And he's got a trailer, his house trailer, small house trailer, about probably about the size of yours. Oh, okay. Anyway, so he asked me, what, could we go look and see if we can find him? I said, sure. So he hopped in the patrol car, and we went around. We started checking campgrounds and everything. Checked the one, I think it's the main damn campground up there. Pulled in there. There wasn't a lot of people camped those days, but anyway, I pulled in there. He said, that's the trailer. He pointed it out. So I pulled up pretty okay. close to it. So he stood, he got out too, but he didn't, didn't come close to the trailer. I went up and I knocked on the door. And I felt, you know, I could hear, you know, movement in there and everything, but I kind of backed off a little bit and uh, kind of around to the side, away from the front door a little bit. And the front door opened up, and the whole trailer blew up. Wow. I, man, I thought I was shot. I felt things hit me, and I turned and ran for the patrol car, to come, <laughs> and the trailer was gone. It completely leveled that trailer. And here comes the guy crawling out of the goddamn rubbish, and he was still alive, badly burnt. Boy, he was on fire. And, and the principal took off running. He got hit with some stuff and got cut. I only had a cut or two on my face. Where'd you put the snacks, Dad? And uh, so anyway, 
That was him. <laughs> he died. He was dead when he come out of that garden. No, he wasn't. He was badly hurt. I think he may have died later. I don't know. But the trailer was gone. Oh, really? Would he have all the gas on inside? What he did, his wife said he was a, a chain smoker. Uh -huh. And said he always kept his cigarettes by there. And what he'd done, is we found out, he'd turned all the propane on. And he laid down in bed to die. But when I knocked on the door, she said he would have popped a cigarette in his mouth. He always did it. Popped a cigarette in his mouth. By the time he got the door, he hit a zippo. Oh, <laughs> blew the whole damn thing up. Well, wow. Who was it? Merle Haggard. Oh, okay. But anyway, one time, it was Christmas time, I used to, at the office, they'd give you flashlight batteries we needed all night. Hell, they'd give us all they wanted. So I went in there, hell, I wanted quite a few. I remember this sergeant, oh, Larson was his name, he said, what do you do, wire your house for D.C.? <laughs> <laughs> I had a bunch. Anyway, I put them in my car, and before I got home, I used to take the car home because I was working burglary. I take the car, I got a call. And went out there, it was in Southgate, right out where Merle Haggard lived and all that. A bunch of kids out there, teenagers. And I went into the house and I came back out. My goddamn flashlight batteries were gone. They stole them from me. I didn't know that at the time until I got the house I didn't have any flashlight batter. And the next morning, we they had some burglars in jail. And it was <laughs> and, and, and the first thing I had, I had to talk to them or interrogate them. Came out, I don't know whether it's Burl Haggard or something. What'd you guys do with my flashlight batteries? <laughs> they, they laughed, you know, they knew they, they took them, you know. But he was a thief, that son of a bitch. Oh, was he? Oh, boy. Burglary and everything else. That's, Good guy. Now he's, now he's a hero. Yeah. Didn't one guy miss, shot at him with a 30 30 and missed him? Who? Didn't one of the deputies shoot at him with a 30 30 or something? That wasn't me, so I No, I mean, uh, <laughs> I thought one of the deputies, so it was, everybody said he was responsible for his career because he had a chance at one time he was yeah, running and shot at him. But he was a worthless yeah. son of a bitch then. I mean, yeah. But, you know, I figure he makes millions now. Yeah. Why don't he give some of the money to the people he stole from? Yeah. That's what pisses me off. Or buy your case of flashlight Yeah, give me some flashlight battery, <laughs> Merle. <laughs> <laughs> Of course, I couldn't say much because I stole them from the county. <laughs> <laughs> For your kids' goddamn yeah. Christmas presents, you yeah. know, there. <laughs> oh, no. oh, yeah, everything runs off batteries. No, I just remember that you had said one time there was a guy that they always teased at the sheriff's department that was responsible for Merle's career because it was some goddamn thing they'd caught him at, and he was trying to run away, and he fired at him. Four or five times, never did hit him. Yeah, it could be. I don't, I don't remember, but I just remember hearing the story. I always like the story about the little black kid pushing the lawnmower down the, the <laughs> sidewalk. I always thought that was. Yeah. I haven't I heard that one. Now, but, uh, uh, I don't remember it now. He was pushing. It was, I think it was. Uh, who's the big guy? Fote. Fote. He said the kid called him a pig when he drove by, and then he backed up and. Asked him where he got that lawnmower and looked like a stolen lawnmower to him and yeah. put it in his trunk of the police car and said he drove him. Because this is my lawnmower. I didn't steal it. I didn't steal it. And drove him all around. And yeah, finally, I remember that. They finally dropped him off. He was about five, five miles. miles from home and said, well, you're right. That's your lawnmower. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Get out of here. I can't remember who you said. Was it Fode or? I know? think it was Fode. I don't remember who it was either. Goddamn, we, well, what we thought it was was a, a, a goddamn motorcycle thing. And we, we, they uh, committed the burglary. Well, it was a runaway kid is what he was, but he left home. And uh, so anyway, was tracking that, that wheelbarrow, <laughs> what it turned out to be. And finally we studied, and old John, I think, finally put it This is, we thought it was a motorcycle. Hey, this isn't a motorcycle, it's only got one wheel. Look here, this is a goddamn wheelbarrow. <laughs> the kid had all this stuff piled there. And here going up, he came up, we went all the way up uh, uh, 
God damn, what's this one guy? Erskine Creek's the next one, and Bodfish Canyon. Mm -hmm. He went all the way up Bodfish Canyon and dropped down into Erskine Creek. Mm -hmm. And we lost him there. And we had broadcasts out. They picked him up by Delano. Oh, wow. Hitchhike. <laughs> or something. With his wheelbarrow? No. <laughs> no, we found the wheelbarrow later. <laughs> But he pushed that wheelbarrow over the goddamn hill. Oh, wow. Jesus Christ. He's always a Dwayne, the day you did me dirty. Yeah. <laughs> I had to book him. <laughs> the one that the woman that shot the, the gal down? Well, this was what it was. It was really a screwed up deal. When I got down there, it's down in that box five, down by the canyon, it was down there. Anyway, this guy. I don't remember all of it. They shot him. They killed him. And trying to figure it out, who in the hell did what and all that, and they were all drunk and half drunk. But anyway, uh, she beat the charge. She killed the guy. And here, years later, went down <laughs> for some reason. And anyway, I booked her for that for the, uh, into jail, but she beat the charge on it. But anyway, I went down there later. I had a call down there, and she come out, and she gave me a big hug. Said, "Dwayne, I still remember the day you did me dirty." <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! Who was it but that she when you guys used to drive the Hearst? Who used to help you drive the Hearst? Oh, shit! Was, was that Doug Ward? Doug Ward, I think probably. <laughs> yeah, or real. They'd make extra money driving to Hearst. What, yeah, God. What the hell? Oh, I don't they, remember. They, remember they dropped a gal, but you went up. Uh, they got called in because she had all the bruises on the body. Keep going. Maybe. No, it was uh, I thought I was Doug Ward, somebody else, but they went up. I want to say it was up beyond us where we used to live, and it was a guy. His wife had died. German gal, big old gal, I guess. They had trouble getting her on the gurney, and then she slid off the gurney between the hearse and everything. And damn, who was when that? she got down there to the coroner's office, they called you up there. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Because it had all the bruises on the body, and they just <laughs> thought maybe there was foul play involved. And yeah, I remember that. We, we, we had to tell them, we said, hey, she fell off the gurney. <laughs> so we, told her to the, we had her on the gurney. We loaded her in the goddamn train, uh, ambulance. But she fell off the ambulance and got wedged down be, be, between the goddamn gurney and the wall. A heavy gun. By the time we got her out of there, she had all kinds of bruises on her. Well, they were investigating. You know, they, well, she had a lot of bruises on her. We want to know how that happened. We said, what happened? We told them. She fell out of the goddamn gurney. You know? well, the mortuary guy there would pay the yeah. off duty deputies if they would drive the hearse, if they'd go up and get the body. Oh, yeah. really? So they. Make she got wedged in there. You couldn't get her out, you know. God. You give them 20 bucks. So no, she was dead. Yeah, but right. Yeah, yeah. But she had all these bruises on her. They thought, uh-oh, foul play. <laughs> oh, no. Big old gal, huh? Big, yeah. <laughs> but when she fell off that gurney, she, she wedged down between the wall and the gurney. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, we used to have a lot of fun. Not fun, but... <laughs> For those days, but I remember this one time. <laughs> Doug Ward was working with me, and we had to. I, I got there first, and the doctor pronounced this. Might have been the same gal. Yeah, I don't remember now. Yeah. Pronounced him dead. So anyway, I called Doug because the nearest ambulance driver was in Ridgecrest, but he always said just call him, and he left keys. And if one of the deputies, he'd pay them if they'd get the the goddamn meat wagon and come down and pick them up. So Doug did. I called him. He come down. And pretty soon I knock on the door. And Doug said, the hearse broke down. <laughs> and he was right around the corner from it. It was downhill in Kernville. And all you had to do was coast down and pull around to the front of the house. I said, I told Doug, I said, well, just, just, the old man was there, but I said, just release the brake and coast down in front. And we'll load her load the gal in, and then you coast down, and turn the corner, I'll come along and I'll push you. <laughs> and anyway, that, that happened anyway, the old man came out, I had, I, I stayed there with him, and he came out, and old Doug Ward, he was in the car, you know. Oh, he coasted down, I hadn't met him yet, it, it was downhill. 
And I said, just close down, I'll come along and push you later. Oh, Doug started out, the old man started saying, boy, that car sure quiet, is it running? <laughs> oh yeah, I was running all right. <laughs> we went back in the house. <laughs> oh, shit. Anyway, so old Doug, I finally got the old man kind of, you know, who quieted down. He wasn't, he was old. So anyway, I took the patrol car, went down the hill, and old Doug was stalled down the bus. I got behind him. That, that's when the gal fell off the gurney. See, they're pushing, pushing him up the hill and, and made the corner and pushed him back to the mortuary. And she fell off. I seen old Doug going down. Yeah. <laughs> Finally waited me to stop, and that's where we had to get her off. Oh, man. Got her back to the goddamn gurney. They're back to the mortuary. And then he gave us a key, and we opened it up and put her in there. And old Doug made the money. See, he paid fifteen dollars for the drive, and old Doug earned that fifteen dollars. <laughs> God damn, <laughs> lifting the gal up. Oh shit. The preacher man says it's the end of time, and the Mississippi River, she's a gold dry. is up and the stock market's down and you're only getting mugged if you go downtown I live back in the woods you see my woman and the kids and the dogs and me I got a shotgun a rifle and a four wheel drive and a country boy can survive Country folks can survive I can plow a field all day long I can catch catfish from dusk till dawn Make our own whiskey and our own smoke too Ain't too many things these old boys can do Grow good old tomatoes and homemade wine And country boy can survive Country folks can survive Because you can't starve us out And you can't make us run Those women old boys raised on shotguns We say grace and we say man If you ain't into that We don't give a damn came from the West Virginia coal mines and the Rocky Mountains and the Western skies. And we can skin a buck, we can run a trot line, and a country boy can survive. Country folks can survive. I had a good friend in New York City. He never called me by my name, just Hillbilly. My grandpa taught me how to live off the land, and his taught him to be a businessman. He used to send me pictures of the Broadway night, and I'd send him some homemade wine. But he was killed by a man with a switchblade knife For forty-three dollars my friend lost his life I'd love to spit some beach nut in that dude's eyes And shoot him with my old forty-five Cause a country boy can survive Country folks can survive California and South Alabama and little towns all around this land. And we can skin a buck and run a trot line and a country boy can survive. 
Country folks can survive.